Are you guys ready for another lens review? This one's gonna be good. The 85 1.4G Nikon lens. The legendary portrait lens. Let's do this. Rock and roll. What's good guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. Today, I'm going to review the Nikon 85mm 1.4G Nikon Portrait Lens. This lens right here, the 85G, is my go-to lens for portraits. Other than the 7200, which I use for portraits all the time, this, I would say, is my go-to prime 85 for portrait work. It's a legendary piece of glass. I've owned this 85 for many years now. Prior to owning this lens, I had the 85D, the 1.4D, and that lens was spectacular as well. But when this guy came out, sold that one, and just, I'm loving this lens. I use it all the time. Like I said, portrait work, it's ideal fast 1.4 it's just a nice piece of glass to add to your professional photography toolkit so for today's review i'm going to show you some sample shots i've taken over the years with this exact lens right here and i'm also going to go over the detailed specs of this lens but first a little history on the 85 millimeter autofocus lenses the 85 millimeter 1.4 g lens this guy right here is the current model this lens came out several years ago. It's been out for a while now. Now, as of today, December of 2020, Nikon has not produced a successor to this lens yet. Yeah, they came out with the 105 1.4, but that's a whole totally different look. It has a whole totally different characteristic. I've shot with that lens. I've owned that lens. The bokeh is just totally different. I prefer this lens over that for portraits. I find the 105 to be a little too long, in my opinion, in my work. The 85 is just a sweet focal length. Again, for portraits, this lens is my favorite portrait lens. If I'm using Nikon cameras and I'm shooting portraits, I'd probably go with this lens. If you already own the 7200 2.8 in your camera bag and you're looking for something fixed, something for portraits and something faster than a 2.8 lens, then I think this 85 millimeter is your go-to right here. Of course, there are other options. And like I said, Nikon has not produced any successor to this lens yet. You have other options like the 85 1.8 G lens, which that lens also is phenomenal. And it costs one third the price of what this guy would cost you. That lens, the 8518, I've heard really good things about. I heard it's sharp. It's a little slower than this, but again, it costs one third the price. You want to spend four to four hundred and fifty dollars versus fifteen hundred dollars, then I'd suggest go with that lens. Now you can find this lens a lot less than fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars. What it would cost you to buy new, pre-owned. I see them go for about eight to nine hundred dollars used. You might get lucky, you might see one for $750. So typically they run about $750 to about $1,100 used in, in the used market, depending on the condition. Sigma also makes a really good 1.4 art lens you might want to check out as well. New, the Sigma 1.4 art lens costs about $1,100 if I'm not mistaken. And assuming you can find one a lot cheaper used, that's a good option to go to as well. The 85G is not the fastest focusing lens, but it is quite. It's an AFS lens. It's not going to be as fast as a 7200 now. The 7200 G lens focuses fast and quiet. This lens right here, it focuses, I mean, it focuses pretty accurately. It's pretty quick. I mean, it's not the fastest lens. Like I said, the 7200 will outperform this lens as far as focus speed goes. Now, if you're like me and you're shooting portraits with this guy, I don't really look at autofocus speed as the ultimate factor. I mean, I'm doing portraits. I don't need it to be that snappy, that quick. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to make it sound like this lens is like a dog. It's not slow, but it's not quick. It's not as fast as a 7200. That's what I'm trying to say. I'd rather have a lens that renders beautiful colors, beautiful bokeh than autofocus speeds. 
any 85 you look at, the 85 Canon makes, the 1.2L, that lens is slow as well. That lens AF speed is slow as well. Now, like I said, it's built solid. It's not too light and it's not too heavy. It's just about right, it's perfect. It's got one switch, which is the auto manual focus switch here. The Nikon badges, it's nano crystal coat, weather sealed. It's got a pretty decent focus ring right in front here. However, I use this lens on AF probably 100% of the time. So this part to me, if the action is not as smooth as older 85 millimeter manual focus lenses, I don't care about that too much because I'm shooting AF with it anyway. All right guys, here's some in detail specs of the Nikon 85 millimeter 1.4 G Nikkor Nikon lens. Has there ever been a product where you guys stand behind, you know 100% what it's capable of and it just sells itself? Well, for me, it's this 85 millimeter. Just like the previous model, the cult classic all metal body 85 millimeter 1.4D, the G lens is it for me. I truly adore and love this lens. The 85G is sharp. However, sharpness isn't everything for me. There's other lenses in the market, 85 millimeter focal length, manual focus lenses. For example, the Zeiss Otis, the $5,000 behemoth of a lens, and a few others that are super sharp. However, that's not everything for me. There are a few important factors when choosing an 85 millimeter for my work. Number one, the lens must have autofocus. For my style of photography, my run and gun photography portraits, I have to have autofocus. And second, the lens must work well with the cameras I'm using. Let's say I'm shooting a wedding and I'm using Nikon DSLRs or mirrorless. I have to have a Nikon lens to autofocus, to be fast, to be reliable. It must work in harmony with the camera and the glass. And like I said earlier, sharpness is not the end all be all for me. When I use this 85G, there's magic that comes out of this lens. I've used this lens so much in my career that I know everything about this lens. I know its capabilities, I know its limits, and when I hold it in my hand and I start using it, there's, like I said, magic that comes out. Perfect example of this, the Leica Sumilux 1.4 lens. For those of you Leica owners that have owned and used the Sumilux 50 or 35 or whatnot, you know exactly what I'm talking about, that magic. And it's the same type of stuff I'm talking about when I take pictures with this gem of a lens. And now you're looking at a few samples of my work using the 85G 1.4. A few images for you to get an idea. Look at that background blur. This is at 1.4. This is the perfect combination of sharpness and bokeh. Look at that sharpness around the eye. And here's the full image right here. And this next example is the bokeh. I focus right on the bride's bouquet. I usually use this lens getting ready moments with the bride. It's a perfect lens for that. Also during the ceremony, if I want some natural light shots, again, portraits, like I said, this lens, I will never ever get rid of. This is my go-to for shots like this. Pay attention to this next image. This shot was taken with the Nikon D3 12 megapixel camera Look at the quality of the image. Look at the detail of the little string there. Look at the background blur, the colors. This is what I'm talking about when I say magic. So if you're planning on getting this lens and you have a Z6, Z7 mirrorless system, let me tell you right now, it works amazingly with the FTZ adapter. No problems, autofocuses, very, very good, just like your DSLR. When I mount this lens onto that camera, Hold on, hold on one second. I have it right here, so why don't we mount it? And I'll show you hands-on instead of telling you. <laughs> so anyway, what I was trying to say is when I mount this guy onto this camera, it just feels perfect. And unlike a DSLR, which is a lot bigger than this body, this 
setup right here with the 85 and the Z6 or Z7, whichever camera you have with the FTZ adapter, just feels better than when it's mounted onto a DSLR. Just the size and the grip of the camera with this lens. And like I said, this lens is not a huge lens. You know, even, I mean, the front element probably looks really nice and big and beefy, but it's not that big of a lens. Just the combination of the Z6, the FTZ adapter and the lens just feels right. I mean, like I said, it's not too big and you can probably take this combo anywhere and not get tired of shooting portraits all day and achieve amazing results. So this, this combination right here just feels, feels right. It feels close to perfect. And if you don't believe me guys, walk into a camera store, ask to see the 85G with the Z6 mounted and just you will see what I'm talking about. Just the combination feels good. And with mirrorless, you know, you see the results before you take the picture. And it's such a great lens. It's such a joy to shoot with this lens. Let me tell you, I mean, there's no VR, there's no image stabilization on the lens. However, you do have image stabilization in body with the Z6, the weight distribution of the glass and the body. It's, go to the store and check it out. You'll see what I mean. And once again, the size of camera and body together. There you go. Like I said, guys, I can shoot with this combo all day. I'll never get tired. Here's the focus. Quiet. Just, just perfect. And another thing I want to add for all you Z6, Z7 shooters, an 85 1.8S Z lens is another option for you. I know it's 1.8. I think they're in the works right now for a faster Z mount lens. If you don't have the FTZ adapter and you just want to stay native, that 85 1.8 could be a good option. Like I said, it's a lot less money than this lens. And if you're doing video with the Z6, I would probably go with the native lens versus uh, F-mount lens. You're not gonna hear the autofocus motors like you do with this when you're doing video. So I probably would go that route. So for all you photographers out there that are wondering, should I get an 85? I already have the 7200. Should I get an 85 for portraits? Well, I'm gonna be doing video clips right now. I'm gonna do video clips side-by-side -side comparison with this lens on a Z6 and 7200 VR2 lens. Side-by-side -side comparison, video clips. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is just a fun experiment I'm about to do, I'm about to try. And we'll utilize these Christmas lights in the back here and we'll see what kind of results we get with both lenses. Okay, everybody, I thought I'd do a comparison test. I have the 85G on one side and I'm comparing it with the Nikon 7200 VR2 G lens. Both cameras, both lenses are set at f2.8, so it's a fair comparison. Camera settings are all identical. ISO, shutter, white balance, you name it. Uh, and the 7200 is set at 85 millimeter, or close to it. So um, I just wanna do a side-by-side, -side, see if you see any kind of difference as far as bokeh, sharpness, my prediction would be it'd probably be very close. Um, we might see a little color difference from lenses. But like I said, cameras are set identical. White balance is identical. All the settings are the same. The ISO, the only difference, one of them is the 85G, which is that one. And the other one is the 7200 VR2 G lens. Both phenomenal lenses, both amazing, professional, top of the line lenses. And we'll just see a difference if we see anything in these video clips. Now what I wanna do is set the 85G wide open at 1.4. All right guys, both lenses wide open. We have the 85G at 1.4, a split screen. And the other camera shooting 7200 wide open 2.8. You guys see any kind of difference? Background blur, is there a big significant difference? How's the sharpness wide open? This is a phenomenal lens. All you videographers out there that are doing sit down interviews, documentaries. This is the Nikon's top of the line 85 prime right now. 
This lens came out quite a while ago. It's not a new lens. For all you Z shooters doing video or photo, Z6, Z7, this lens works phenomenal with the FTZ adapter. No complaints whatsoever. So what do you guys think? A lot of difference from the background blur, both lenses. Can't wait to see the results myself. <laughs> so here's another video clip I want you guys to see. I'm using the Christmas uh, tree lights to really highlight the bokeh comparison. The focus is on the purse. And this one right here, the 7200G VR2 lens, I set it at 85 millimeters or pretty much close to it. And I try to match the, the composition of both cameras. Just for a fair comparison because this, the 85G right here, as you see, is at ISO 100 because I'm at 1.4. 2.8. ISO 400 with the 7200 and ISO 100 with the 85G at 1.4. And just to be fair, I set the 85G at 2.8. This is at 2.8 at ISO 400. So both cameras, ISO 400. Here's the 85 1.4 at wide open, closest focus point, about three feet away from the purse. And now let's check out the 7200. So here is the 7200 now. 200 millimeters, I try to match the composition as best as I could, but we're 2.8 at 200 millimeters, wide open. As you could see, the f1.4 lens compression at 85 is, I think, a little better than the 7200 at 200 millimeters wide open. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. One of the most important things when I'm choosing to buy a portrait lens, especially in 85, is its sharpness and bokeh. I want to be able to shoot wide open at f1.4 and I want the lens to preserve its ultimate sharpness. I want the lens to be sharp wide open. I understand shooting wide open, you're not going to get the sharpest results. You might want to stop it down to 1.8 or 2.0. The images that this lens produces at 1.4 are simply beautiful. Yes, this lens costs $1,500 brand new. And like I said, you could pick this guy up for a lot less. You don't have to buy it brand new. And now that the Z mount cameras are out, the mirrorless system, the price of F mount lenses have gone down just a little bit. So you can probably find this for about under $1,000 if you look. Did I mention that this lens focuses quietly and smoothly? I did, right? This lens is pretty quiet. AFS, baby. <laughs> okay guys, so who is this lens for? Well, if you're doing portraits, you want fast portraits, low light, you want beautiful bokeh, buttery soft, and you're looking for an 85 focal length, prime, sharp lens, then this lens is for you. Event photographers, wedding photographers, portrait photographers, studio, you name it, go with this lens. It's a really good lens. It's a legendary piece of glass. I use this. It's my go-to portrait lens in my bag. Comes highly recommended. It's my favorite focal length for portraits. I use it all the time. If you're buying G lenses, 1.4 lenses, we have the 24, the 35, the 85, the 58, the 105. You're not gonna be shooting wide open at 1.4, especially this lens. If you don't plan on, if you plan on using this lens at 2.8 or, or f4 or 5.6, I wouldn't buy this lens for, for that purpose. I, I use this lens at 1.4 the majority of the time. Sometimes if I want optimal sharpness, I stop it down just a little bit. But I'm a big believer, if I'm spending the money and I'm buying a 1.4, I'm shooting it at 1.4, probably 85 to 90% of the time. That's just me. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed the review of the Nikon 85 millimeter 1.4G Nikon lens. My go-to for portraits all day, every day. If you like videos like this, more lens reviews, camera reviews, we talk all things photography, photography tutorials, you name it, please like and subscribe to Vahography. 
hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. Once again, thank you for watching. Whatever portrait lens you choose, and if you go this route, you will not be disappointed. Take it from me. All right, guys, this is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. Take some amazing portraits out there, and we'll see you on the next video. And remember, rock and roll.